How's it going everyone? Well of course you'll be seeing today's breakdown and review of the melee weapon Fallout 4 called Pikmin's Blade. Obviously I'll cater this to those that are looking for a melee focused build and weapon, but I'll mention it as an option to those that aren't, even if they are looking for a good melee weapon, even if they aren't focused on a melee build. I'll discuss strengths, weaknesses, key perks, and mod options if you choose to use this weapon. To get it, what you're first going to have to do is gain access to a master locked safe in Pikmin's gallery. Uh, and to get it, you have to go to Pikmin's gallery, enter through the basement. Uh, you'll eventually reach Pikmin being held hostage by some raiders, and he'll either give you the key when you save him, or you can kill him and take the key. That's up to you. In terms of the base stats, it starts with a base damage of 15 per, per hit. It has a fast swing rate and a weight of 1 pound. Pit Pikmin's blade is special though because it has two special abilities. The first is the wounding effect which causes an additional 25 damage per hit and it stacks per hit so damage can really start to add up. And number two, it comes with an already equipped 0 0.6 sneak attack damage multiplier and it causes damage or enemies to bleed for an additional 25 damage. So what this basically means, all added up the two abilities combined, is that on sneak attacks you gain an additional 0 0.6 multiplier on top of your perks plus 50 bleed damage. It's an insane amount of damage. In terms of strengths, it uses very little uh, action points when you're in VATS to do damage. It hits very frequently in VATS, which means extreme bleed damage stacking will start to add up. And if you're sneaking, it means an additional 0 0.6 multiplier on the hit alone. Uh, th so that alone with those perks or with those abilities make it one of the absolute best sneak melee melee weapons in the entire game uh, because of the extreme sneak damage potential combined with the extreme bleed damage potential. Uh, so those are the strengths. In terms of weaknesses, it does not have a very hard base damage hit. So if you're not sneaking ad against stronger enemies and you're not perked up uh, well in the perks to try and upgrade your sneak damage, you're not going to be able to stagger them, and you're probably not going to do a ton of damage otherwise, so we'll get to this in a second. In terms of modding the weapon, you're going to want to stay with the stealth blade. There's no real reason to switch off of it. Uh, and next, if you're looking to specifically buff this weapon for like a melee build per se, through perks, you're going to want big leagues, you're going to want rooted, you're going to want bloody mess if you want every last bit of damage. Uh, and of course you're going to want sneak and ninja combo. This, It's like this weapon was made for this combo perks. If you have those two maximally buffed out, you can output like, I think it's what, four, like a 14 plus 0 0.6, a 14.6 sneak damage multiplier in, in addition to bleed. There's very few enemies in this game that are going to survive that. It's incredible. And of course add in blitz, so that way the additional further sneak damage through vats can give you even further damage output and much stronger hits though of course this isn't, isn't an exclusive list so overall though you can find more higher dps options for one strike you can make the argument that this should instantly be in the top two to three weapons for sneak melee builds in the game and it's easy lights out baby there just isn't a lot of downside to this weapon with this much dps potential if you're in a sneak build if you're not in a sneak build you will find better options see you later